How are we doing? Already getting warm. Okay, so, but what we're gonna be doing is making one of these. This, so the blanket's now, it's touching the floor right now. And I'm five foot four. So this gives you a good idea of how big it will be. Here's how long it's perfect for. You should have um, five skeins of yarn. And I'm going to be doing gray and white, so I'm going to alternate mine. Wingardium Leviosa. Like so I'm starting with gray. Cats, thank you for 12 months, one year! So what you need to do first is pick your first color. So if you're doing a whole solid blanket, then you don't have to worry about just grab one if you are doing a multicolored blanket grab the one that you want on one of the edges one of the long edges now i've made these multiple times never taught them to anybody so bear with me <laughs> this might take like a couple of tries of me looking at it and being like that's how you do that <laughs> Could you make it bigger if you wanted to with more yarn? Yes, Cassie. If you wanted to do six skeins instead of five, you can do that. If you want to do seven, um, we're making this one 25 stitches wide, but you can go anywhere between 15 to, tw uh, to 25, depending on how wide or narrow you want it to be for like a throw blanket. You can make it as wide as a king size bed and make a king size bed blanket, which this would be extremely warm for something like that. First thing you're going to do is you're going to lay this out. All right, so everybody, you're going to take your first skein and you're just going to sit it in front of you. And then you're going to be putting your yarn off to the side. Right now, it doesn't matter what side yet. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a loop. And then you're going to grab the long piece, not your tail, but your long piece and you're gonna pull it through and tighten it into a knot. So you have a little loop like that. Again, you're gonna take, you're gonna twist to make a loop, and then you're gonna reach through the loop, grab a hold of your long piece, and pull it tight. Will it be easier if the camera's flipped? I can quickly rotate it. All right, there we go. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to reach through your loop and you're gonna pull to create another loop that's roughly about the same size as the loop that you just did. So again, you're gonna reach through the bottom and you're gonna pull yarn through to make a loop that's roughly the same size as the loop you just had. The bigger the loop, the chunk or the looser of the knit it'll be. The smaller the loop, it, then the smaller it'll be. Like smaller than it. So again, just make a loop. And then you're gonna count. So we've already done one, two. You're gonna do the same thing again. Three, four, Trying to find the side that you can see here. Five, six, seven. You should see now, if you after you do it a few, that it starts to look like a braid. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So again, I made my loop. And you just reach from underneath and grab the loose yarn and pull it through to make a loop. 13, 14, I think I'm at 16, 17, 18, 
I think this is 19. <laughs> I'll have to recount. 20. 21, 21, <laughs> 22, 23, 24, 25. So now I have 25 links. So what you're gonna do next with it on your right side and you're just gonna rotate it around so it's on your left side. You're gonna then make one more loop so you're going to take this tail, put it in here to make one more loop. And now your yarn, your, your tail of your yarn will always be pointing the direction that you're going. So basically you just weave back and forth. So this will always be kind of pointing the direction that you're going. And then your little braids here, there's little loops in between each one. You just take your yarn and pull it through a loop and lay it flat. Take that next top loop, pull it through, and lay it flat. So let me see if I can get closer. So this is your braid right here. It's this top piece right here. Every single one is a loop. Count my loops to make sure. Remember how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I missed a loop in there somewhere. I think it's. Who did this? Yeah, it's this guy right here I missed. Your birds will come back. Of course they'll come back. So right now, your tail should be going to the right. You're just gonna pull it over so it's going to the left. You're gonna make one more loop. On that last one. Now the tail's going to the left. And here's the best part. Is now you just make loops inside these loops. The end. <laughs> And that's all you do, is you have that tail just guide you along, and you find your loop, and you just pull through another loop. All right, so I got to the end of my third row, one, two, three row. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another loop. Flip it around so my tail is going the way, the direction that I'm gonna go, and I just keep going. Yes, you finish. So, Tebe, you can do two different options. If you get close to being done with the skein and you don't want to start a new color mid row, I don't. I, that's what I'll end up doing is just starting a new color mid row. Um, you could just cut it like right at the end, um, and then start there. You'll just be losing out on some yarn if you can't make it all the way back on another row. For me. In the long run, it's not going to be, it's not going to look bad having it start mid-row, I don't think. So I can tell just by looking at this that I'm starting to make my loops a little bigger because it's starting to go outwards, so I need to start making my loops a tiny bit smaller. Or tighter together. That way I can rein my, my blanket back in. I know I don't need it to be extra long. Bye! <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tails and you're gonna do a box knot. 
Don't know what a box knot is. <laughs> make a full size blanket. What would you consider a full size blanket? This is going to make roughly a three foot by five foot blanket. So what a box knot is, and this is actually good that these are two different colors, is you're going to take one uh, strand and lay it on top to be the over top size. And then the next time you're going to take the opposite strand and make lay that one on top and tie. I'll do that one more time. So my left strand will go on top and tie. And then my left strand again will go on top and tie. And that is how you do a box knot. Square knot. Yes. Sorry. Square knot. Sorry. It's been so long since I climbed. I learned that in rock climbing. Okay. And then you can cut these ends off. Um, I usually just leave them and tuck them and weave them in just in case. And then you're just going to continue on. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your outer, your first and your second loop, make sure that that's centered for you. You're going to take your first and your second loop and you're going to pull your second loop through your first loop. I have that. Take your second loop and pull it through your first loop. And then you're going to take your tail and you're going to put it through the third loop and make another one. And then you're going to take that loop and put it through your loops. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do it from the beginning again. Okay, so we're here. You're going to take your first loop and your second loop. You're going to put your second loop through your first loop. So second through the first loop. And then you're going to take your tail and make a new second loop through your third loop. Okay. And then you're just going to continue that on. So now your, your second loop is going to go through your first loop. Take your tail, make a new loop on the next one, and just keep going. And what that's doing is making a braid along here. And keep going all the way to the end. Okay, so this is perfect because look at how short my tail is. So I made my last one here. And I have one loop and a tail. This looks like a kitty cat tail. All right, so what you're going to do next is you're just going to tie a knot. So I just tied a knot with uh, my tail around the loop. 
and then I'm just gonna weave my tail down the side. So I just took my tail and tied a knot around the loop and now I'm just weaving the tail all the way down. This is what the braid looks like. I don't know if you can see that. Real quick, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna weave the rest of all these little tails where we tied our skeins together. All right, so this is one side. The other side has a slightly different pattern to it. I love the stripes. We did it! Yay! And it's so comfy and it's so warm. And the best best part is, so like when you, I'm gonna give these to people. I think I might end up keeping this one. Is when you fold it up, it's it's so big. <laughs> and then you just wrap a ribbon around it and then call it a day. So, um, if you guys did make one of these and were able to finish it this evening, please, please, please take a picture of it. Um, tag me on Twitter, at Mrs. Dr. Lupo, or on Instagram, at Lupo Photo, and I will share them and comment on them and love them because I just get so proud when you guys do these projects, especially when you came into them not knowing anything about what we were doing, and you create something new and amazing. It makes my heart so happy. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Okay,